Hi, this is Greg Hughes from 90 Second Website Builder. In this video, I want to talk to you about how to make a responsive website. A responsive website is one that responds to whatever device is looking at it. In other words, it accommodates the browser or the window when it's viewed by the user. I'll show you what I mean by looking at this demonstration website I'm building right here called .com Classroom. As you can see, I've built my website here on my canvas, but I'm going to click the F5 button on my keyboard so we can preview this in a browser. So here's what this website would look like on a desktop. And it looks normal. You can scroll down and you can see I have several objects. I've got some rollover text objects. I've got what's called a mega menu, another kind of a menu up here, a lot of text, even a video and some images, as you would expect. But watch what happens to these objects when I reduce the size of the browser. I'm going to go down to about the size of a tablet, and you can see that the website has actually shifted or changed. In fact, it has responded to accommodate this size of a view. So if I was looking at this website on, say, a tablet, it would look like this. You'll notice everything still fits and kind of shifted over. Some things got a little smaller. For example, this menu. And if I go all the way down, say, to a smartphone size, you'll notice that it shifts considerably to accommodate a 320 pixel browser. This is what responsive design is. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to work with the responsive design tools so that you can build the same kind of websites. So let's stretch it out again, and you can see it responds. OK, let's close the preview and look at what we've done. First of all, you may or may not have noticed that at the top of my canvas, where the ruler bar is, you can see there are a couple of arrows. There's one right here at about 320 pixels. Then there's one over here at about 768 pixels. And then there's the end of my ruler, which is the default, it's called. This is the desktop size. I want you to see what happens when I click on these little arrows. When I click on this one, you'll notice that the canvas changed. This is called a breakpoint, or a variation of this same web page. So when I click on this, I'm now working with the web page in a 768 pixel view. And if I click on this arrow, I'm now working in the 320 pixel variation of this same page. It's important to know that I'm working with many of the same objects, because it's still one page, but it's one page with three variations one at 320 pixels, one at 768 pixels, and then again, my default size, which is around 1,000 pixels. Let me show you how I added these breakpoints. We could go up to the responsive design tools, as you can see right here, and simply click on Add Breakpoint. I've already added a 320, and of course, I added the 768. There's some other presets, or you can type in your own number if you want to. I'm going to cancel out of this and show you something else. There's another way to manage the responsive design tools. I'm going to move the camera down to the bottom of the screen so you can see. Sometimes it's a little faster to just bring your mouse down here and grab these. You can see that. I can add breakpoints by clicking this button. It brings up that same prompt. Or I can manage my breakpoints, the ones I've already created, by simply clicking that one. It's also a quick way for me to toggle between my breakpoints. Right now, my canvas is working with the default size. If I wanted to switch to the tablet size, I'd click here, and you can see the canvas is now showing those objects. The same is true for the 320 pixel. Let's go back to the default, and let me show you one other thing that's important to know before we start working with breakpoints and responsive design. I'm moving the camera back up so you can see a little more of the screen. And I'm moving it all the way to the left, because what you may not have noticed is that I have another palette open. You might be familiar with the toolbox, but I went up to the View menu earlier, and I also clicked on this one called Object Manager. Because as we're working with responsive design tools, we're going to want this Object Manager open. This feature allows us to see all of the objects on our page. And sometimes we want objects to be visible or invisible, depending on the breakpoint we're working with. With that in mind, understanding how we add breakpoints and that they're variations of the same page, and how we can work with these objects and the object manager, let me show you something to help you get started with the concept of responsive web design. So now here I am with a blank page. And that's why the object manager is also blank, because it would show the objects on the canvas. Now we're going to start with adding breakpoints. We can do that by going to the Page menu and using the responsive web design tools. Or again, we could scroll to the bottom of the canvas and use this option down here to create breakpoints. For now, we'll use the Page menu at the top. I'll click here to add a breakpoint. I'm going to add a 320. I'm also going to add one called 768. That's my second breakpoint. And now, remember, I have a default breakpoint as well. Therefore, I have a total of three variations now. Now notice, 
that I'm currently in the default variation. So any design work that I do right now is going to appear on the default variation. If I want to design my 768 variation, I'd need to click on this arrow or go to the bottom of the page and click the 768 so that I can change to the tablet variation and start designing that. And again, to design the mobile size or the 320, I would click here and I'd be working within this area of the canvas. So it's important to know which variation you're working in. However, here's something that's even more important you should know. When you add an object, that object is a single object on the page even though it may be shared across variations. Here's what I mean. I'm in the default mode right now. I'm going to stay there, but I have to move the camera so you can see the object manager. I'm going to grab the image tool and add an image to the default variation. Click open and here's the image. You'll notice that this image only shows in the default variation. Watch. If I switch to the tablet, it doesn't show. If I switch to the 320, it doesn't show. Although, the image still exists, it's just not visible. Watch the object manager as I switch between variations. Right now I'm in the 320. You'll notice that this image is not visible. When I click on the tablet, the image is still part of this page, it's just not visible. And when I click back to default, you'll see that it is in fact visible and that shows in the object manager. That's important because it gives you control over which objects you want to share between variations. And that's going to be really great for you so you don't have to keep reinventing the wheel as you're adding objects to your responsive web page. I can decide to use this image on any one or more of the variations as I so choose. But here's where it gets really interesting. While I can share this object among the variations, one of the things that I can do is I can change its size or its location and it will not affect how it shows on the other variations. Let me show you what I mean. Let's have this image show on all three variations just for this demonstration. So in other words, I'm going to click the 320 and then go over to my object manager and I'm going to share this image between the default and the 320. I'm also going to click on the 768 and also go to the object manager and show this image. So now this image is shared among all three variations and you can see that as I toggle between them it's still there. However, watch what happens now. I'm currently on the default variation. I'm going to move this all the way over to the center of the page. Notice that when I go to any of the other variations while the image is still there it did not move. Here I am in the 320. Here I am in the default because I can change the location of an image and still have it be shared as one image. Let's go to the 768. You can see that the image is still there, but watch. I can even change its dimension and have it not affect the other variations. So let's recap. Here I am in the default, where the image is in the center. Here I am in the 320, where the image is in its original position. And in the 768, it's even larger. It's still the same image, but what I can change is its size and its location. And still, we're only working with one single image, one single object. What I can't do is change the contents of this object and have it vary. If I change the contents of this object, it will change across all three variations. Let me show you what I mean. Let's go back to the default and double click on this image and instead of a number one, let's pick a different image. In fact, I'll choose the number two, select open. Now since I've changed the contents of this object, it's actually going to be shared across all variations. So whether I'm in default, mobile, or tablet, you can see that it affected all the variations. So what I can do is I can change its location and I can change its dimension and still be sharing the same object. That's very important to note. In fact, it's so important that I want to demonstrate it with another common object, text tool. So I'm going to make a piece of text right here. Now I happen to be in the tablet size variation right now. So this text is only visible by default in the tablet variation. If I click to the 320, again, you'll see it's not visible. If I click to the default, you'll see that it's not visible. And again, you can confirm that in the object manager. I have to go to the tablet size to see that I have this object only showing here. Although, I can again share it if I wanted to. And again, I can change the position of it. So let's go to the 320 and let's make it visible there. Let's go to the default and make it visible there. So now it's shared across all three variations. But in the default, let's put it up toward the top of the page. Again, remember I can change the position. When I go back to the mobile, still the same object, different position. I go back to the tablet, same object, different position. What I can't do is I can't change the contents of this. 
without affecting all of the other variations. Since I changed the text here, and since it's the same text object, it's going to say the same thing in every variation. Here's the thing to remember. Remember that you're working with a single object and that that object can be shared. You can always change the location and the dimension and that will change, but the contents of the object must stay the same. That means sometimes you'll want to make a special object just for one particular variation that's only used in that variation and you'll choose that by using the object manager. Better way to explain it is to go back to our demonstration of the .com classroom website and I'll show you what I've done. So let's open up that. Here we are back at the .com classroom website. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the camera so you can see that I'm in the default setting here. When I go to the 768 you can see that I've designed the website like this. I've also made a 320 and I've designed the website like this and you'll notice that some of these objects change. For example, let's go back to the default and let's talk about just this menu. This is called the CSS menu. In fact, according to the object manager, it's CSS menu number two, because when I select it, you see it highlights in the object manager. And of course, it's visible for this variation. When I made my tablet variation, I had to change the contents of this menu to a smaller font. That means I needed a new CSS menu. I didn't want to share this one. So when you go to the tablet size, you'll see that CSS menu is now invisible, but instead I've got a different CSS menu. I call the CSS menu one. And since I changed the contents, I had to make a new one. This is its own object and it only shows in this variation. If we go to the 320 variation, it's not there at all because I don't want to use a CSS menu when somebody's looking at this on a smartphone. So I don't allow either of those to be displayed. Instead, I used a whole new object called a panel menu, which is right here. This is only visible in this variation because it's only applicable to a 320 pixel view. And it's all because of the object manager that I can control which objects are shared, which ones are invisible, now each of these objects are going to be different. For example, this text object works fine in every variation. It's called text object number eight and it's inside a layer, layer number two. So if you look at the 768, layer number two and text object number eight are the same exact object. They're visible in all three variations because they fit just fine. Here we are again with layer number two and text object number eight. So they're being shared across all three because they fit just fine. Let me show you another trick. In the default variation, I'm using this menu called a mega menu. I'm going to preview it and show you what it does. When you hover over the mega menu, I set it up to be sort of a three column selection of menu items. And it works great, especially in this desktop size. And in fact, if we shrink this down to be more of a tablet size, the mega menu works even fine in the tablet size. And so I just kept it shared between 768 and the default size. But when I got to the 320 size, the mega menu wouldn't work as a three column. So I made a new mega menu and changed its format, its contents, to be a single column. So what I'm doing is I'm sharing the mega menu that has multiple columns in the larger variations and I made a unique mega menu just for the mobile size, the 320. Now you can see I've done that for many, many of the objects. For the desktop version, I'm using an effect called a rollover text. That's what these five boxes are. And you may have noticed when we did the desktop view, when you roll your mouse over these, they have a really cool effect. Well, that's great for a desktop. The problem is when this shows up on an iPad or a smartphone, there is no mouse. And so there is going to be no effect. So I can't use this in those other variations. So these objects are only visible in the desktop version. When I made the 768 version, these are not rollover text objects. These are instead just images that link to wherever I want to link these to. So here they're just images and as you can see in the object manager, if we move the camera down, these images are down here. They are visible in the 768 version of the web page and they're visible in the 320 pixel version of the web page, but notice that I changed their location because remember I can change the position or the size and still share the object. So these five objects are being shared between two variations even though they're in different locations. If we go back to the default, these are not those objects. You can see they're not visible. Instead, these objects are visible. 
So hopefully that gives you an idea, but you can see that as we make different variations of the page, we're going to be moving objects into different locations, just like I did with my video. You'll notice that I moved everything over to fit here. And when I made the mobile version, I made the video much smaller, obviously, so it fits down here. Just be mindful that you can share objects or not share objects based on what the need is for that particular variation or breakpoint. You control that with the object manager. And hopefully that will help you get started making some great responsive websites in 90 Second Website Builder.